everyone, so I'm in my backyard now. My intention was to go to one of my fishing spots in Bonita Springs and try to build some of the tools and things that I learned from the book that I read, which I will show you guys right now. It kind of just showed us how to build different shelters, different tools, all your basic like primitive survival tools that you may need. I wanted to try to build a shelter, but I don't, I don't have the means of going about to actually do that. And then I'm just gonna try to make a whole bunch of different tools that were uh, explained in the book. So I'm gonna go gather some supplies and we'll see how this goes. I need at least nine long sticks, like sturdy sticks, and then uh, some either vines or saplings or any type of bendy flexible sticks. So I'm thinking of using this palm over here. I don't know what species it is, but what I'm thinking is it's nice and flexible that I can take the little fronds off of the palms and actually use that to weave my actual basket because that's the part that I was most concerned about was finding uh, vines or flexible wood that I would be able to. These look pretty sturdy, pretty good. Uh, they're not as flexible as I thought, so maybe as I go down lower, these guys, yeah. So I'm gonna chop a few down. Okay guys, so I cut down about five of these guys and now I'm gonna use my knife and I made sure to uh, use a tool that I would have, like in my backpack or something, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to simulate this situation in using tools that I already had on. The book that I read uh, called for making a stone axe, but I don't have any stones around here to sharpen against each other, but ideally that's what they would recommend instead of using a knife, but this is the knife that I usually have on me, so I decided to work with this knife instead of making a one of my own. So what I'm gonna do first is actually take these fronds off. So I'm just gonna use my knife and kind of like clean them up a little bit. Okay, so I realize it's so much easier to just pull off the leaves than actually using the knife. So. Okay, so I separated the leaves from the actual like stem of these palms. And so the next step is to cut them about 20 inches long. So I wanna say it's gonna be about here. Okay, I just wanna stop and I've done all this so far. We still got ways to go, um, but it's coming along pretty nicely. Look at that, I kinda of see the basket. I just wanted to take the time to kind of explain a little bit what I'm doing. First what I did was I tied a knot right there, holding all of my sticks, like my bigger or longer sticks, I held them all together with that knot at the end over here. And then I just started weaving. Um, what, what, what I'm using to weave are the palm fronds that I cut. I'm just leaving a tiny piece of this waxy coating on because that's the bendy part, uh, but I'm leaving some of that fibrous wood in there. Uh, just to keep a little bit more uh, volume to it so it won't take me as long just like skinning and it's just going to add a little more strength to uh, the actual basket. But what I'm doing is, let me show you guys, I'm taking my knife and splitting it in half and I'm going all the way down like this. Alright, so now it's in half and see it's getting bendier but it's still keeping its strength because of that waxy coating gonna help keep it a little longer I think. Uh, then I'll split it one more time. So now it's in a fourth and it's even easier to bend so it's perfect for weaving this basket. I'm just gonna show you guys one. So what I'm doing is uh, see right here this was where it last stopped that last part that I had so I tuck it behind and then that shows me where to start. So the trick here is to go over and under, right? So I put, like I line up this end piece where it stopped with this new piece. And that's like the new spot. See how it, that's the end and then this is the beginning. I'm laying it behind because you weave it so it goes over and under. And this one I'm gonna lay right on top in the same spot where it ended. And then I'm just gonna continue my weave. So if it's under, now it's gonna go over here, over this one, under this next one, over this one, under this next one, over this one. And then that's where, uh, if you 
I know I'm all over the place. Uh, if you guys can see, that's where our stick ended. So when I go over with this one, I make sure to lock it almost so it hits and holds all the other ones in place. See? Now it's held in place by this one that I am now weaving. The next thing I want to mention is this is actually my second attempt at this. And as you can see, I've kind of figured it out. But the book said to make sure you have a odd number of rungs. So if you can see, I'm working with one, two, three, four, and five. So I have five like main uh, sticks here. And that is because if you use an even number of sticks, it turns out looking like this. And it doesn't look quite right. So even number of sticks, odd number of sticks. Lesson learned, right? Hey guys, so this is the basket. See that in there? But uh, the problem here is I honestly started running out of supplies. Uh, I know that really shouldn't be an excuse, but uh, I think the idea with this project was that in the wilderness, you know, in a survival situation, I would be able to do something along those lines and I'm kind of on a time crunch. But this is the basket. It's a little smaller version, obviously. Uh, use more sticks, you know, keep them spread apart a little bit more. You can make a wider basket. But this would be good if you were out, you know, collecting firewood, or uh, maybe you're looking for fruits, or scavenging, whatever you need to hold. Uh, I could have even intertwined some more of these, uh, well, I kind of made them, the vines, uh, and made like a little strap that I could like put on my back and just carry it around so then when I'm out wandering or whatever I find some stuff that I need I can just stick it in and I can hold a lot more that way instead of like struggling to like carry as much as I can in my arms I now have an easier way to do that okay there is a massive storm rolling in yet again I'm going to see if I can build a shelter before it starts uh, storming uh, I am gonna make it on the smaller scale just because I don't have the means to make a big something uh, in my yard but it's all the content building so so the first thing that I need are these long sticks these are a miniature version so these are gonna be my base everything to build my frame and then what I'm gonna actually use is the old leaves that I pulled off of uh, these earlier let's see how this goes okay so I'm going to set up right over there see if I can build if I can build a miniature version of a shelter. As you can see, the storm is coming in, so we're in a time frame. If we don't build this, we're gonna get wet. Uh, so yeah, I'm using a, like a, it's an A-frame hut. So let's see how that goes. Uh, but as you can see, I uh, had to work with uh, what I got. 
There's my tiny little uh, shelf right there. Uh, the style that I use is actually a A-frame hut. So I use a total of six sticks and I use grass blades, but you know, typically you don't want to use vines or any type of flexible material. And I tie those together. And then from there, I kind of just laid on uh, leaves to like make this A looking shape. Uh, that's just the main idea, real quick, how to uh, build a shelter, mini version. Uh, you know, ideally you want to do this on a bigger scale. Instead of using just the palm leaves, uh, I was just using the entire palm frond. And so I resorted to working in my garage because I have easy access outside and it's still raining. I did want to try to make a few more tools. Uh, one thing being the tongs. Uh, that our book mentions. And so it's pretty simple. It talks about splitting a piece of wood. So split the piece of wood like so, right down the middle, but not all the way through. So like this. And uh, then, that being said, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> that being said, I am going to use a shell. So just push the shell up. Use the sturdier shell next time. Uh, but I'm just gonna push all the way up and until like it kind of splits and then this guy is in there pretty high, but then you're gonna use some twine like this and actually just tie it around like so. And this is just to secure it so that it doesn't fall out while you're using it. There you go, they are tongs. So the shell is in there, and then you just kind of pinch it together, and they look like chopsticks, <laughs> honestly. But uh, yeah, they're good for cooking. You just grab whatever it is you're flipping on your fire that you made, you're roasting tongs. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna try to make is a basalt axe, like an axe. Um, but for this one, uh, for this specific item, my book says to use like a dense piece of wood but I don't really have that uh, so then that being said you're just going to burn a hole about halfway through right and when that kind of starts to char you kind of scrape out all the embers and it's just gonna leave a nice long hole it's gonna allow you to then chisel out an opening for you to put your uh, axe head in there so, so my book uh, actually teaches us how to make a axe head or a stone with a stone uh, just like with the tongs a shell and I'm going to use a shell instead of a rock and to do this I'm going to smash it on the floor so I get a sharp uh, little edge and that's what I'm going to use as my axe head because uh, I'm trying to strong enough shell these things yeah so this one's pretty strong unlike the one we use for tongs all right there we go that's a pretty sharp edge right there so that being said ideally you're going to want to uh, use a fire burn a hole in there, but I am going to use my knife and just kind of create a little wedge that the shell can sit in. Alright, so I think I created a big enough hole. I'm going to take my blade here. So, there we are. There we have it. It's not the sharpest, so uh, the book says to use another rock and to go along the sides here and actually sharpen it. This is how you make a mini version of a axe. So. Well guys, thanks for watching all my videos. It's been a really fun semester. Please ignore my voice. I sped up the footage for the sake of time just so that it wasn't a super long video because for some reason I was talking like super slow. Yeah, see you guys later.